I want you to notice um, when we look at a face. So this is um, the photo reference I use for this drawing here. This one is made up. But um, when you look at a face, um, you're going to see faces are kind of ovalish shapes. Hers is maybe a little pointier down at the bottom. Um, but, you know, you can almost imagine you could draw a line right down the center to separate all the features left to right. That's going to make it a lot easier to measure. And you can also draw a middle line um, in the face to decide um, what the middle point is top to bottom of the face. And really, if you look at the eye line, if I measure from the eye line to the top of the head, then from the eye line to the bottom of the head, that is about the middle of the face. So you can see with my drawing, that should hold true as well. Yep, that's the middle of the face. My eye line here, let's see. Yep, that's the same. So the eye line that way is about the middle of the face. So an easy way to start off dealing with a portrait, drawing a portrait, is to start with that kind of oval shape of the face. Now I'll say, you're gonna have to change this up before the end of the drawing because no one's head is shaped like a perfect oval. Maybe one punch man, but that's about the closest I can think of. So if you have your oval, that's gonna be your head. And then make a line down the center. That's gonna show you where the features are, uh, divided from left to right. And you're gonna make a line here. This should be about the middle of the drawing, right? This is where your eyes are gonna go. So if I divide this quickly, if I'm looking at a frontal face, so a face from the front, one, two, three, four, five, five even-ish spaces are gonna give me um, the size of the eyes um, and the placement between the eyes and the placement to the edge of the face. So if you divide this into five, it's gonna show you where you put your eyes. This middle section is gonna be in the nose. I'm gonna kind of sketch lightly an eye here. It's kind of a football shape, a little bit like that. A sort of blunter ends than a football. So I'm gonna sketch that in lightly. It's gonna tell me, this is kind of holding my place, more or less, for where the eyes are gonna be. Then my nose, um, I'm gonna go about here down the head. And then I'm gonna make a line for the mouth. All right, so that kind of gives me the height of these items, the nose and the mouth, but it doesn't tell me much about how wide they should be. Um, so if you look, let's see, at a face, I'll just look at my drawing on my face here. Um, the nose, the outer edge of the nose is gonna be kind of in line with the inner edge of the eye. And the outer edge of the lip will be in line with about the middle of the eye. Now when I'm doing a sketch of a face like this, I'll put in some lines to help me, but they're kind of like traffic cones. When the road work is done, the cones come up, okay? So these are construction lines. They're here to help you, but you're gonna take them away eventually. So if I'm looking at the width of the nose, it's gonna be about here. The width of the mouth, I'm gonna drop down some construction lines. It'll be about here, okay? I do this lightly because I don't want to have to erase very hard to pick this up. Now if I actually build in sort of the tip of the nose, now everybody's tip of the nose is a little different, but if I build one in here, I can kind of see what this is going to be like. Now this feels really broad right now, but remember, you know, above your eyebrow, uh, your eyes, you're going to have eyebrows, and the eyebrows come right in to the bridge of the nose, and that makes... Ooh, the overall appearance of the nose much narrower. That bridge kind of goes down to there and you're gonna have some kind of tip. Now, a lot of this, you're not gonna see a lot of hard outlines here. Like you'll see more shading. So I can erase those construction lines if I am happy with the placement of my nose. You know, you, you can do this as you're working or you can save like coming back and erasing construction lines to the end of the drawing. Okay, so now I've got an idea of where my nose is gonna be. The next thing is my mouth. Um, so I know that I want it to be about this wide, 
and I know I want it to kind of be along this line somewhere. So I'm gonna dip in the top of the lip. I'm gonna give this person sort of a Cupid's bow. And I'm gonna bring this line out. And now I'm gonna do the center line of the mouth because you've got an upper and a lower lip, All right? This person's kind of smiling a little bit. Now people are gonna have different shaped lips. Um, you might have someone with a really full lip. This person's got kind of a full lower lip. You might have someone with a thinner lip. Okay, so there's my lip. Really, I recommend if you're doing this um, for yourself that you look either at a photograph or at a mirror to, to see the shape of your face and to see the shape of your facial features a little more clearly. Okay, so I'm gonna come back and revisit the eyes. Um, I'm gonna darken the line and look at the shape. Eyes are not typically shaped like perfect footballs. They bend and change direction. Okay, so I've got some facial features. Now, okay, I told you before, no one besides One Punch Man is gonna have a perfectly oval shaped head. So we're gonna have to come back and look at this shape that we've built as a starting point. Now, typically your face is gonna come in a little bit right around your eye. If you look, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it's gonna come out a little bit at your cheek. And it's gonna be your cheekbones. So I'm gonna build that in. And then I'm gonna come up here, make the top of the head again. So that's a big change already from that big oval. And the jaw is typically not shaped like a perfect oval either. Um, some people have rounder faces, some have square chins. I'm just gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna give them kind of a square jaw down here at the bottom. So you can see that changes a lot. She's no longer looking like an oval. All right, so maybe a little bit more of the details of the eye at this point. Um, so you're gonna need an iris um, for the eye. Those typically, you don't see the whole iris of the eye or the whole color part of the eye unless a person is um, surprised or scared. So you see part of it kind of hanging down like a semicircle. And then you're gonna want the pupil, that's the dark part of the eye. That again is gonna be a partial circle hanging down from the top of the eye, okay? Um, other side, you wanna make them kind of symmetrical. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical, but you, if you get them really far off, your person's gonna to start to look cross-eyed. So <laughs> you can see I've left a little bit of light within my pupil. Um, if you don't leave this, the eye looks dry, I guess. Sort of like a dead eye. You want to have a little sparkle of light in there. Their eyes are wet, you know, so. Anyway, um, some people when they're drawing eyes, they, the next step would be the, the lashes. So some people when they're drawing eyes, their eyes kind of look like this, that surprise iris and pupil. And then they go like, woo, 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 spider legs, okay? Um, you know, you might have very pronounced lashes, um, but I doubt they're gonna be like that kind of eye. Um, most of the time, a more natural way to do lashes is just to kind of shade a little bit around. You might have some lines that you see, but you probably won't see each and every little lash, okay? Um, depending on how thick your lashes are, you might just, you know, not have extra lashes or you might shade a little bit. You might have some eyelashes that you see, you might have none. Or you might have very, you know, if you wear like false lashes or like a lot of mascara, you might have really exaggerated thicker lashes. Um, so let's see, um, the next thing we gotta deal with is maybe the top of this head, right? Um, so right now the head looks um, very long um, in the forehead. Um, so this measurement about the eyes being the center of the face, uh, the top of the head would be all the way at the top of the cranium, not just your forehead. So all the way, like if you pat the top of your head, that's what we're talking about, the top of your cranium. Um, so typically, um, people have a lower hairline, you know, than that. So maybe my person, their hair, even without bangs, right, their hairline starts like a little lower and actually 
covers like that. And typically the hair, you know, uh, is gonna go up, you know, a little bit off the top of the head. We all style our hair differently, but that's gonna give us just a little volume there. This person's got straight hair. You can see, you know, you think about the texture of your hair. You could give yourself curly hair or a braid if you've got a braid. I'm gonna come in and erase some of these construction lines because right now they're getting in my way a little bit. And I think you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better too if I erase some of them. Okay, um, so one thing that I don't have right now in this face is some ears. Um, the ears are gonna start way up if you kind of Put your finger right at the edge of your eye and go around your ears. You can see the tops of your ears sit about at the uh, level with your eye. And the bottoms of your ears, if you start at the bottom of your ear and move around to the front of your face, just pulling your finger, that is right about the level of your lips. So your ears are going to really sit in here. Now some people um, have a, an ear that pokes out a lot and some people their ears are you know, you don't hardly see them at all from the front. Um, and some people, you know, their hair mostly covers up their ears. So it's gonna just depend on your person, how much of that ear you're gonna see. I think my person, their hair is gonna cover up some of their ears. I might see some lobes. But their hair is gonna cover up the bottom part of their ears. So anyway, um, here is um, a good idea of how you might start a sketch of a face. Uh, when you're bringing in the, the uh, neck, I will say, the neck is usually just a little bit in from the jaw. It's gonna be kind of close to where the ears are. Here's a little wrinkle for your brain. If you're a mammal, your ears are always gonna be right behind your jawbone. Think about any mammal you've ever seen, even a dog, their ears start right behind their jawbone because they're mammals. Anyway. Um, you can keep on going with this. Like some of these other ones, I've started to add some shading to, um, to make them more volumetric. So, um, this gives you a good idea of how to start off a 